What's up guys and welcome to another Angler X video. In today's video I'm fishing with my friend Dave from DWS Outdoors and we're out chasing giant deep water white bass. These fish are congregated in large schools and eager to bite, if you can find them. If you aren't already subscribed to DWS Outdoors, click the link in the description below and do just that. We have a great video for you today smashing midwinter deep water white bass through the ice don't go anywhere crystal clear and it just rained look what you're looking for these are the fish right here and then are they right off the bottom yeah. is that the bottom yeah the thing is is so if i go see how i panned left there mm -hmm. and i was still on fish that's a perch way up there okay but then go this way, so it starts there. And it just gets and it goes. Gets so strong. yeah, so, so, so the school is the like school is running this way, and it's about two hundred feet long. <laughs> it's, it's not. Hmm? That it's ironic they're running the crack. Yeah. Do you notice that? That this is the school's orientation. Plus, they might just be moving a lot right now. Oh, yeah, they are. Well, that's that. W they were there, and they're swimming that way. Okay. So, so they might be back where we started. <laughs> well, see where all my stuff is. Yeah. I think there is. Uh, I think their main thing that they feed on is bloodworms and stuff. Bloodworms and like mayfly larvae. Yeah, maybe a little more that way. There you go, right there. Okay, they're showing up now. It's 80 feet that way. Yeah, they're actually getting closer to me. See what I'm doing? Yeah, you're hurting them. Yeah. <laughs> See the fish right there? Dave's out drilling holes. He's herding them up. Driving them in. Those are white bass that we're going to be targeting today. You basically just drilled right over them there and they scattered. Yeah. So there's still some there. They didn't like that. They're chasing it. Yeah. You just gotta keep them moving until they hit it. Keep them coming up. That's what the fish look like on sonar. Let's see them. Let's see the big school of fish down there. We're jigging just above them here. So far, no fish. I'm getting them to chase, but nothing, nothing biting so far. Just gotta find out what it takes to fire them up here and be in business everything we catch we're gonna keep just because when you pull them up from the depths we are uh, they're not gonna be good to release once we've decided uh, that we don't want any more fish if we get any we're gonna be done hooked up Finally figured one of these guys out. My first white bass of the morning. There we go. Nice fish. Did you get a big one? Uh, probably a medium one, I guess. Hooked up. Finally got one to bite again. Looks like a good fish. This one feels like a better one than the last time. Oh yeah.
See that swim bladder sticks out when they uh, come up from so deep. White bass we are catching are being pulled up from depths of 60 feet and greater. This rapid change in barometric pressure on the fish causes the swim bladder to overinflate. You may even see the fish's eyes bulge out. Fish experiencing barotrauma of this nature should not be released. If you are fishing at depths that cause a fish to experience barotrauma, plan on keeping everything you catch or fish shallower so that the fish can be released. Pulling the fish up slowly can help reduce the chances of barotrauma on the fish. Oh, nice white bass. Just chasing them around out here in this deep water. You gotta stay on the school. Seems like when you catch one, uh, the school scatters and you gotta track them down again, but it's my second fish. Uh, we're on them. Oh. 15 and a quarter. Nice fish. Swing and a miss. Only like two or three more misses away from learning exactly what not to do. <laughs> Got him. You're right, they are like lake trout. The body of water we are fishing today is very clear and we are fishing over 60 feet down. In these conditions it's best to use a braided line to eliminate stretch. This will ensure a good hook set and enable you to detect bites better. At the end of the braid I'm tying a number 12 barrel swivel followed by 6 to 9 feet of 8 pound fluorocarbon to which I tie my jigging wrap or my jigging spoon. The small barrel swivel allows me to reel the swivel through the rod guides. Got one on me. Just bringing it up, getting them to chase it up, and then when it looks like they're going back down, then I'll drop it back down. i got two of them going after me now. Maybe three. And I'll drop it back down. You can see those marks down there. See how they're chasing it up and down. Big school below me right now. You can see the marks. Come on, baby. They're real tough to get the bite here. Just gotta keep working them until they finally decide they're gonna smash it. Been working these fish up and down, up and down. Just cannot get one to commit to it here. Kind of frustrating. They chase it down a lot like trout would. If anybody's out there has done some trout fishing, you know those trout will chase it down aggressively. And you just gotta keep that bait moving. On. That's a really stiff run. <laughs> yeah, this is like a lake trout type run. Yeah. That's probably why my line broke. Well, at least you know you get a good hook set. <laughs> Got that one on the buckshot rattlespoon. Bunch of wax worms. Like three wax worms. This would be crazy with like dip downs. Or even zip up or something. Oh, they're starting to move over.
Yeah, this rod is <laughs> hardly even bending. This one feels a little better. You might want to use your drag for some of them. You might just rip it out of their face. Yeah, I got it set loose. Because I did that a couple times where I felt it. I could tell it was a really big one. Oh, yeah. Today I found two different jigging techniques that got fish to bite. The first and more aggressive technique was to get the fish to chase the lure upward. Jigging and reeling combined with short pauses seemed to get the fish to chase up. If the fish would back off, I would open the bale, dropping the lure back down. The fish would follow it down, and I would work it back up and repeat this sequence until the fish crushed it. Fish on. The other method that I used that also got bites was a more subtle presentation of quick pops of the rod followed by a pause. During the pause, I would watch the rod tip for the strike and set the hook. Oh, it's a big bass. I know the rod's stiff. You might be wondering why I was grabbing the fish's swim bladder with my pliers. Well, I was using small pieces of swim bladder to bait my hook, and it was working well. Nice. It's shown again. Smaller one there. Can't get them to like these guys are coming out of the school. Every one of the ones that I have sitting behind me were down in the bottom, and I could just see the mark move through the school. But I'm getting them all the way up to here, so I'm just wondering if your meat makes a difference. See, like, see how that guy came in? Yeah. I'll pull him out, you drop that down. Between this one and that one and those ones in there, I'm probably close to 20 fish already. <laughs> My cooler only fold, holds 22. Well, it might hold more of these because these are all about two inches smaller than the ones I was getting the other day. But I mean, this is like your average this this it's really fun when you find these because i think most of these are males um it's really fun when you find them in the open water because these are the ones that'll come in and just you'll be like twitch twitch <laughs> your rod almost gets ripped out of your hand you're like oh <laughs> got one yeah see see how far in it is yeah yeah i didn't think about putting like a piece of the air bladder on there that's a it's an easy way to do it plus it's like really thin so it just flops <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> Lance is over here explaining to me how delicately it flops <laughs> as they crush it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Even though my rod is not bad. <laughs> That's a nice rod though. Bigger one. Look at the size of that next to mine. <laughs> oh, thank you. You can have your whole back. <laughs> let's just go back, back, back and forth. Yeah, let's, let's do that. See what we can fill out and put your fish over there. <laughs> oh, see, you scared them away. Did I? Yeah, with the bigger one. That's what I'm saying. So anytime the, we pull a bigger one out, you they. I got him above the school. Right, but I think what it is is he's so big, he comes up through the school. That kind of thing. White bass are excellent table fare, so we are happy to keep what we catch. To achieve the highest quality white bass fillets, the fish should be bled out and put on ice. 
when filleting, oh, remove sticker. the dark red flesh that exists on the side of the fillet closest to the skin. That was weird. What do you do? When I pulled them up, like three, four fish like followed them up. Oh yeah, they do that. If you can get them to stay up there, then you can get back down and get them another one right away. There we go. On the noodle. I had to keep the rod tip right at the surface, so I had the whole, <laughs> whole stroke to set the hook. There you go, another nice fish. Did you let him go? Huh? Oh. No. <laughs> that looks good. But I'm gonna guess they're all gonna look that way now. <laughs> this one might be a perch too. Dude, that would be cool if this was a giant cool perch to look Throughout the course of the morning, I use three different types of rods. The first is a medium power rod with a moderate action. The second is a medium heavy rod with a fast action. The third is a noodle rod with a very slow action. I very much enjoyed the fight of the noodle rod, but the medium power rod with a moderate action was best suited for this type of fishing. That's kind of fun. That one felt good. Because <laughs> that rod was actually like folded. Get you enough to fill a smoker. Oh yeah. Been a while. Yeah, if you want to just keep it simple, you'll see the fillet on the straight off and then the line on that. Big enough. Beautiful. Noodle rod is getting them. I'm just, I'm just popping it and watching that really soft tip and that's just dumping it. And then I'm just giving them the full swing. That's all I've got for today's video. I wanna thank Dave from DWS Outdoors for sharing this awesome bite. Remember to check out DWS Outdoors by clicking the link in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and maybe even learned something. And until next time, thanks for watching.